Hello, everyone. My name is Leslie Damaso. I'm the digital coordinator of Lunar. We are so pleased today to have composer Patricia Lopez live from Rio de Janeiro. So Patricia Lopez is a Brazilian composer and pianist with a multiple rooted musical identity. Her latest works as a composer are The Feminine and Pessoa, a set of compositions based on poems by Fernando Pessoa for voice and ensemble, performed by the Chamber Orchestra of the University of Sao Paulo, and Hortensia for Woodwind and String Ensemble. In October 2017, she performed in Portugal the concert The Feminine in Pessoa at the International Jazz Festival of Caldas de Raña and a Casa de America Latina in Lisbon with the violist Lida Chen Argrich as her special guest. Patricia Lopez has recently pursued a PhD in music with her research focused on the musical universe of the Brazilian composer Antonio Carlos Jobim at University of Sao Paulo and performed in 2016's Jobim song Matita Pere alongside Dori Caimi and the Chamber Orchestra of the University of Sao Paulo with the conductor Je Jardim. Throughout her academic education, she has studied with the concert pianist Linda Bustani and holds a master's degree in musical composition from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, having Marisa Hesenge as her principal advisor. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Hi, Leslie. I'm so happy to be here today. Oh, we're so happy to have you. How are you? <laughs> Oh, I'm great. <laughs> I'm now in Rio de Janeiro. I'm visiting my my parents here in in Rio de Janeiro. Wonderful. So it's very cold where we are right now in Wisconsin. Please tell us about what the weather is like where you are right now. Well, um, the weather here is really very pleasant. It's a tropical climate and now it is um, 25 degrees Celsius and I am really uh, near to the Ipanema Beach. I'm one block away from Ipanema Beach. And yeah, I, I must it's say spring it's spring. Uh, the last time Patricia and I spoke, she sent me a picture of herself on Ipanema Beach eating ice cream. <laughs> I just I felt so envious, you know, that that she's experiencing that weather. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Patricia, I'd like to know what your musical life was like as a young girl. Uh, where did you grow up, and how did you start playing the piano? Who inspired you? Yes. Um... Uh, I, I lived in different countries when I was a child and uh, when I started um, studying music I was in London in England and um, my mother has a great influence in my studies in my musical studies and um, I, I, I really feel grateful and privileged to have had um, uh, this support from my parents and with, um, with this uh, musical education. And I also lived in Japan when I was a child. And it was really incredible and, uh, to, to um, live in an, in an Eastern world and especially in Japan. And so um, I was, that's why I say I have a multiple rooted musical identity. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so London, wow. Um, so do you have some memories of maybe some musical, some concerts that you attended yes. as a young girl? Yes. My, father, my father used to take me to, to, to watch the London Symphony Orchestra. It was um, regularly, nearly every week, and it was really amazing and really it was incredible. I had this opportunity to, to listen to, to wonderful musicians and orchestras when I was a child. <laughs> wow. And what was it like uh, in Japan? And what city were you at? I was in Tokyo. And I really, I love Japan. And I used to uh, 
uh, I went to an international school and, and I was nine when I went to Tokyo from nine to 12. And um, it was really amazing. I had a wonderful piano teacher and I studied really a lot. <laughs> I studied piano a lot and it was really amazing, amazing. I that was, uh, so in Japan, was that the first time you took piano lessons or had you taken it before that? I started, I started in, in London when I was six. I started studying them. So what was that like? You know, your, your first piano lesson, did you feel then that, you know, that music was something that can uh, enhance your voice, you know, of, of your connection to the world? Yes, um, I remember the first musical lessons that I had and it was really, um, I was, uh, I still remember that feeling that I had that it was the one thing that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> And this has been my focus and my, um, my yeah, I think my focus for, for since then, music is my one thing that I, and that then, I When did you decide to finally make it uh, a formalized study? And when you, when you started, you know, how did you decide to study with Marisa? Oh, yes, uh, with Marisa Hesangi, she is one of the most important teachers that I had. And uh, I started studying with Marisa when I did my, my master's degree in the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. I was really, um, um, it was a, a, an incredible opportunity because uh, I was her last student before she retired. She retired in 2002, and I started my course in, in 1999 with her. Wow. And so it was incredible, and it was a woman composer, and, uh, <laughs> she, and she's really incredible, a, uh, a lovely person. She's a lovely person, and she was really loving to me, and, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for this as well, <laughs> to have had this opportunity. Wonderful. Um, something really significant that I'd like to tell the audience is that you are actually the first woman to earn this degree in composition from the school. And um, wow, what an amazing thing. And, and to study from a woman as well. Yes, um, it's really a very uh, masculine environment. And um, um, I had this great opportunity and uh, after me, th there were uh, a lot of other women composers that came, uh, that finished the, the, the course. <laughs> and it was really, okay. yes, it was a, an incredible experience. Wow. Well, um, why don't we, let's shift and talk about Pessoa. Yeah. What was it that first drew you to his poetry? Um, um, my grandfather uh, was Portuguese. Uh, my grandparents, both of them, are, uh, were Portuguese. They were Portuguese immigrants in Brazil in the beginning of the 20th century. And they, um, I think that like any other immigrant family, um, the culture, the, their origin, um, was uh, something really very important for them. And so um, my grandfather used to recite the, the poems of Fernand Pessoa when my mother was a child. And so uh, she knows a few of his poems by heart. And so uh, literature is very important for my mother. And I think this was, this, uh, was something that I that I learned since I was a child. And so this is, um, I have very sweet memories from my childhood, from my grandfather. And so um, Pessoa uh, reminds me of my, my grandfather because of the pronunciation. The, the Portuguese from Portugal is a bit different from the Portuguese from Brazil. 
And so um, this reminds me of him. Wow. Yeah. Um, will, you, will you recite for us that first poem that yeah. Yeah. really captured you? <laughs> yes, um, the, this first poem from Fernando Pessoa um, is from his heteronym. Um, Alberto Caero, and it was written in 1923, and it's called Não Basta Abrir a Janela. Não basta abrir a janela para ver os campos e o rio. Não é bastante não ser cego para ver as árvores e as flores. É preciso também não ter filosofia nenhuma. Com filosofia não há árvores. Há ideias apenas. Há só cada um de nós como uma cave. Há só uma janela fechada e todo mundo lá fora. E um sonho do que se poderia ver se a janela se abrisse. Que nunca é o que se vê quando se abre a janela. And now, here's the English translation. It isn't enough to open the window, to see the fields and the river. It isn't enough to open the window, to see the trees and the flowers. It isn't enough not to be blind. It is also necessary to have no philosophy. With philosophy, there are no trees, just ideas. There is only each one of us, like a cave, there is only a shut window and the whole world outside and a dream of what could be seen if the window were opened, which is never what is seen when the window is opened. Wow, this is so beautiful. I can see you know, why you are so intrigued, intrigued with his poetry. Um, so, for the next section, we're going to take a look at the video in which you're, you're going to talk about uh, the feminine in Pessoa. So let's take a look at the video. So the feminine in Pessoa has 15 songs of which three are recited poems of Fernando Pessoa with instrumental dialogues and 12 have melody to the text. I will give here examples of two songs. So they are Já não sei andar só pelos caminhos and the English translation is I no longer know how to walk the roads alone. And the other song is Passei toda noite sem dormir. And the translation is I spent all night without sleeping. Já não sei andar só pelos caminhos. O amor é uma companhia. Já não sei andar só pelos caminhos Porque já não posso andar só So in this piece Já não sei andar só pelos caminhos I wanted to draw attention to the extreme points of loneliness and emptiness that I found in the text and I used this music as an example of a recited poem with instrumental dialogues because I enjoyed this experience very much. When I was composing, it felt for me much more dramatic, like a play at the theater with actors on stage. Eu gosto tanto dela, tanto, que não sei como a desejar. Não sei o que é feito do que sinto, não sei. 
Todo eu sou qualquer força que me abandona. Toda a realidade olha para mim. Girassol com a cara dela, mãe. If you're just joining us. We have composer Patricia Lopez here with us from Brazil. So uh, Patricia, um, it's interesting to hear that the text in Janosse is spoken. And in the video, you said that you highlighted certain words where the instruments would join with the voice. Uh, what were some of those words? Yes, Leslie. Um, before we, we continue, I'd like to acknowledge the, the wonderful performers that were with me in this, uh, were playing this video. And um, Fabio Bustamante recorded the, the images, and um, the images were recorded at Adonia Junior stu Studio in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. And the first singer is Andrea dos Guimarães, a Brazilian singer. And on the flute, Lea Freire. Um, the clarinet, Paula Pires. And the viola, Sebastian Ruiz. And the recited poem is uh, the wonderful Sofia Vitória. She's a Portuguese singer. And in the viola, Sebastian Ruiz, and um, I'm playing the piano in both songs. <laughs> so um, to continue, um, your your question. Um, so I, I ask um, why you know why you what certain words you highlighted in the piece, and how did you choose these words? Yes. Um, 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 I wanted to, uh, one of my ideas was to let the, the singer, um, uh, to let her have more freedom to, um, to recite the poem freely. And I chose a few words where we would meet <laughs> um, uh, in the song. And so um, the, um, when 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 he says um, that he trem he, he trembles, and um, this was this was one part that, that I thought it was very important. And also when he says, "If I don't see her, I imagine her, and I am strong like the tall trees." And then the the uh, near the end, the whole of me is like a force that abandons me. And so these are the, the important points that I wanted to highlight and I wanted to, to do it together with the, with the singer and also the beginning and all the, the, the silence as well. Yes. <laughs> oh. How, when you compose, are you at the piano or does it come to you when you're doing just anything or are you at the computer? What is your process like? Well, um, it is something that happens um, um, during the whole day while I'm doing things and I'm walking and I am looking at the at the sky and I see the birds <laughs> and um, when I, I hear something, um, some noise or you see all, all of these things, they, they start to build and I start to, to, to recite the poem or to sing a, a few parts and also the piano is very important for me to uh, compose with the instruments. Uh, my, the hands, the hands suggests also uh, 
um, new ways and new harmonies and and so it's a, it's a process that I am entirely in it with everything, with all my senses. And it's as if I was in another world, another universe. <laughs> so the song cycle is called The Feminine in Pessoa. Uh, why did you choose that title? Oh, yes. um, um, I wanted to do a, a project about the feminine. This is um, this is a very personal interpretation of what I see is um, feminine in Pessoa's poetry. And this has been my search and recognition for the feminine energy. And so I wanted to talk about the feminine that we all have, the feminine, and um, and to bring out into light the the feminine energy. What is that feminine force, and how does it connect with your own life when you were writing these? Yes, yes. Um, uh, um, Pessoa's poetry really helped me go deep in this search. And um, it was really a, a, a natural process. And I started to think about the, uh, the importance of these feminine figures in my life, and especially my mother and my daughter. And um, I composed, some, some of the songs were composed, inspired, uh, in my mother, I think my mother has to do with everything because she, she's my mother, <laughs> my origin, and um, and my daughter, and my daughter is is really, yes, uh, I I don't even know how to say this in words. You see, but it's all the 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 meaning and also of my feminine energy and my recognition as a woman composer and my profession. And so I wanted to bring this and put it out into the light. <laughs> Beautiful. So uh, in my research, I learned that Pessoa had 75 different personalities in which he wrote from. And uh, these pieces, these poems that you chose, was it one personality that you kind of gravitated toward, or did you have a few that you know that you wanted to express? Um, yes, um, uh, Pessoa, as you said, had um, a lot of heteronyms, these imaginary figures, and this is incredible because um, there um, he wrote under different many different selves. And so it's um, um, these possibilities of uh, different ways of being in the same person at the same time. And uh, this is really, really incredible. And there is one heteronym that I, uh, that I like the most, which is Alberto Caero. And, um, I was looking at the, the, the songs that we are doing today, and uh, uh, the three of them are, are from Alberto Caillero. And so he, he, he describes, he reveals his struggle between, um, between thinking and feeling, and, um, and also between the idealization of the dream and the frustration of dealing with reality. And so this vulnerability was really incredible to see, to recognize my own vulnerability. And it, it's, it's an incredible experience to read his poetry. <laughs> wow. So our next video here is an analysis of the last piece. Uh, Paseto de noche sin dormir. Uh, I spent all night without sleeping. 
Let's take a look. So here is the text of Passei Toda Noite Sem Dormir, based on Fernando Pessoa's poem. I repeated some of the words and also small phrases of the original poem. I didn't change any of the words. My intention here was to provoke even more the obsessive thinking that I found in this text and to emphasize the extreme point that is written in bold letters here. Now, the same text in a very simple translation to English that I made just for this video to demonstrate my procedures. So he's talking about his obsessive thinking during the night thinking about this feminine figure. He creates thoughts with the memory of what she is when she talks to him. And he continues having these obsessive thoughts and he says, I am suffering from an enormous animated distraction. And when, when I feel like being with her, I almost prefer not being with her. So I will changing the sixth from minor to major to create um, ambiguity and to stress the ambience with this constant repetition as a parallel to the obsessive thinking of the text. I only changed the pedal near to the end when it reached the point I wanted to emphasize at measure 155 going through G flat, F, and reaching the lowest note on E at measure 161, together with the highest note of the melody. And then the poet on the text finishes his story quite tired, I presume, without knowing exactly what he wants after all. 
so I used long notes and less movements and rested at D minor. What a gorgeous piece, Patricia. Oh, I had uh, the pleasure to learn Passé. <laughs> I had a pleasure to learn this and a couple other of your songs in the past couple of months. And I must say that this is definitely my favorite one. And I want to tell the audience that Patricia is the Lunar Call for Scores winner this year. And the Feminine in Pessoa was going to be performed live. And if you want to hear more of these songs right now, you can search for The Feminine and Pessoa, Patricia Lopez, on Spotify or YouTube. And hopefully you can experience them live when we can gather again at our next festival. And Patricia is hoping to be there with us. Yes. <laughs> uh, Leslie, uh, I would like to acknowledge the musicians that recorded this song that we just heard, Passe Toda Noite Sem Dormir. And um, Paula Mira is, uh, is on the vocal. Is, she's a Brazilian singer, a wonderful singer. And William Teixeira on the cello. Um, Catarina Rossi uh, on the viola. Ohad Talmo, tenor sax, and myself on the piano. Yes. <laughs> we have... Well, let's see here in the chat. We have a few questions from the audience. Uh, tell us about your approach to blending influence of Brazilian folk elements with your classical training. Um, this, is a, this is a very complex <laughs> question because what I do is very intuitive. And so um, I started to get the feedback from the audience that my compositions really had some uh, uh, influence from Brazilian music, uh, popular music. And um, I started to understand why and to, to think about um, the importance that the Brazilian culture has in my life. And I... Um, this is really uh, 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 a mirror. Uh, this reflects what I heard and what I listened to when I was a child, which was uh, really the best of Brazilian music at home, really uh, uh, that my parents um, 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 wanted us to have uh, our, our cultural roots in, in cultural Brazilian roots because we lived um, abroad. And so um, this, was, this was very good for me. And also because I listened to a lot of uh, classical Western music. And so this is how I explain this. <laughs> this is so, a, yeah. uh, yes. it's it's a really very intuitive, very intuitive. So it's much, very much like a fusion of all your experiences. A, a, a follow up to that is a, a question from the audience. How did you pick uh, a time signature or the key signature or the tempo? Uh, do you think about text painting when se setting the lyrics to music? No, no, no. Um, usually I write down the poem 
the whole poem and I choose where I want the, what, what I think is the most important phrase that I want to emphasize. And then after I do this, I, I start to build the structure of the, of the composition. And then when I have an outline, I start to compose, but I usually go with very different ways from what I had in mind, but I usually keep that, that part that, that I, uh, I wanted to highlight the, the most important, usually with high and the highest notes of the melody and the lowest note of the, the instruments. And so the key is very important. I can't change the key afterwards because I usually um, use the, the lowest notes of the instruments or the, to, uh, or, or, or the region of each instrument. Uh. So what, what, is, what is next uh, in your compositional life? Are you planning on setting more of these uh, poetry by Pessoa or are you going to explore further and uh, take a look at different poets? Or uh, any well, uh, the, the, this Pessoa project is an open project. Um, I really, I don't wish to, to finish it, never. <laughs> so I, I'm always composing new songs and, um, but um, um, I have in mind um, other, other new projects. One, um, I, I really enjoy writing for vocal music, really very much. And um, I am starting to compose, to create a project um, with uh, a woman poet, Brazilian poet. She was the first um, Brazilian writer that, that was recognized as a writer. Uh, her name is Maria Firmina dos Reis. She was the first woman and the first black woman writer. And I'm starting this project and I'm also continue, continuing a project that I have that is instrumental music with names of flowers. <laughs> wow. and yes, it's a cycle of compositions, instrumental compositions with names of flowers. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> what a pleasure to have had experience your music, Patricia, and to have your company today. It's so wonderful and thank you so much. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our audience? Yes, um, I am very happy to be here today and I am grateful uh, to Lunat Festival uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk about my work and to share my work today in this live session. And uh, I'm also grateful for this uh, recognition of the call for scores and um, and I'm, I'm also grateful for everybody that are, that are listening to us today. And so thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. And also grateful for all the musicians, all the yes, people thank you. that are part of this project. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> You're welcome, it's a pleasure. Um, so you can see the entire uh, program on YouTube right now, and then we're gonna post it also on our Lunart Facebook page. So Lunart Live happens every fr last Friday of the month. Our next presentation is November 20th with the New Milwaukee Concert, a trio, trio of period instruments. It will be a musical celebration of the 400th birthday of composer Isabella Leonarda. So you won't wanna miss it. All right, goodbye for now. Thank you everyone.